Today we're talking about the $2 trillion government spending bill that's proven harder to pass than a kidney stone, and just as fun a process. Specifically, the only slightly precedented part about the government cutting Americans checks. Now, Generally I like to start this show by asking the question, what's the goal? But this episode is particularly hard to write because I'm filing the motives here under unclear. Half of the newspaper articles call it a rescue bill and the other half call it a stimulus bill. Now That might sound like the difference between potato and potato, but that's the difference between running to train for a marathon and running for your life. On one, you're going to need good shoes and endurance, and the other, you're just going to need to get the heck out of there as soon as possible. It makes it really hard to judge the effectiveness of this bill if you're not sure what it's trying to accomplish. Now I'm going to treat this like it's a rescue bill, because its mission statement says, Purpose, providing emergency assistance and healthcare response for individuals, families, and businesses affected by the 2020 public health issue. Now what that says to me is, the primary goal here is to keep people fed and safe as opposed to going out and spending a ton of money to restart the economy. Hold the adrenaline because we're keeping this economy on ice until we can solve its underlying health problems. Now, With that in mind, any sort of context here really goes out the window, because I can't think of a time in modern history when America had to be rescued in this way. When I started writing this episode, I was thinking, oh, clearly 2008 is a good comparison. Because back then the government thought making it rain was a great way to fix the US economy. The bill provides individual tax relief in the form of tax rebates. These rebates will amount to as much as $600 for individuals and $1,200 for married couples, with additional rebates for families with children. That plan was a complete success, which is why today I do all my investing through Lehman Brothers. Sending people checks is a pretty inefficient way of stimulating consumer spending. Check recipients didn't put the money back into the economy. A 2008 survey found that only 20% of those who received checks spent them. Another 32% put the money into savings. The rest used the checks to pay off debt. Fiscal responsibility strikes again! Now there were some major differences between 2008 and today, starting with our goals. Going back to the intro, according to today's bill, its purpose is providing emergency assistance, not stimulating the economy. So it's a bit of an unfair comparison. This brings us to a much larger change between 2008 and now. In 2008, you could buy things. If you handed me a thousand bucks right now and said, all right, Steven, go spend it. Well, I can either go to the grocery store, the liquor store, or Steam. I mean, even Amazon is down to just selling essentials. I'm going to keep paying my rent and restock my Campbell's soup. So what impact will this have on the economy? Short answer, I don't know. Longer answer, I don't know. You might instinctively think that the 2008 number of 20% of people actually using their stimulus checks to buy things is only going to go down, given the current circumstances. But this is where another huge difference comes up between these policies. In 2008, these checks were tax rebates, so if you didn't pay taxes, you didn't get a check. Today, everyone's getting a check, which means that the poorest people, also known as the people who are going to use the money to buy essentials, are going to be given money. Tax rebate checks are not an efficient way to stimulate the economy. The biggest impact is made by increases in the food stamp program. They produce about $1.73 in demand for every dollar spent. Now This plan feels like eh, a little bit of A, a little bit of B. Let's refocus though because our goal today isn't to stimulate the economy. What this number does tell me though is, if you give poor people money, they're going to be more likely to need it and subsequently more likely to spend it than if you give a middle class person money. Gee, that would make a great headline story for no duh news. Now, As far as accomplishing the goal of helping people, a check to every person as well as boosting unemployment insurance and the many, many, many other changes in this over 800 page bill are going to be very helpful. I just got furloughed myself, so 
<laughs> yeah, let's figure this one out. Guess that makes me a full-time YouTuber. Now to the other consideration that was raised by one of my viewers. What impact does this huge injection of cash have on our economy, of the short term and the long term? Inflation? Now unfortunately my crystal ball is currently in the shop and my tarot cards keep coming up three of clubs. But I can try to use intuition and 2008 to answer that question. Now first I want to talk a little about what inflation is. Back in college one of my econ professors worshipped a single equation. And much like all of the worst equations, it's more letters than numbers. Now I'll just speed through the explanation because that might be the most boring graphic I've ever created for the show. It basically says that if you multiply the money supply by how fast people are spending money, it should equal the quantity of goods and their price. Now let's get to the fun part, analyzing it. Our goal is to figure out this all in terms of price. If prices go up, that's inflation. Boo! Now let's start with the velocity of money, which has bottomed out as people just stopped buying things. An easy way to think about this is, if the government printed hundreds of trillions of dollars and then immediately locked it all in a safe without telling anyone, that would be an increase in the money supply, but it wouldn't affect inflation as the velocity of that money would be zero. To that extent, it was recently reported that large denomination bills were in such high demand this week that at least one Bank of America branch actually wasn't able to satisfy some customers pulling out tens of thousands of dollars at one time. Yes, people are pulling their money directly out of the economy and not spending it. Now, unfortunately, they're not destroying that money, so it doesn't affect the monetary supply. They're just sitting on it like they're collector items. Second, we come to quantity. This is the quantity of items for sale, which is also bottomed out. If you give people more money and fewer things to spend it on, well, their willingness to spend more on those remaining items go up. Now next, to price. Because oddly enough, the good old fashioned American greenback is super strong right now, which means prices should be going down. If you can buy more per dollar, then you need fewer dollars to buy things. You may have noticed huge price increases in groceries recently, but that's more the suppliers just being dicklings and preying on public panic, more than an inflationary effect. So we have a big red arrow for velocity of money because people aren't spending money right now, a big red arrow for quantity because there's nothing to buy right now, and a big red arrow for price because the dollar is getting stronger as we speak. This leaves the real elephant in the room, money supply. Well surely that's going to go up quite a bit. I mean $2 trillion, that's got to be quite the splash in the bucket, right? As you can tell by the way I'm phrasing the question, there's a bit more going on here. Specifically, you have to ask the question, where's this money coming from? When Congress passes a spending bill, the Treasury borrows all of the necessary funds by issuing Treasury bonds. So we're selling bonds for money and then putting that money directly back into the economy. What that says is this isn't really a money supply issue because we're taking money out of the economy to put it right back into the economy again, as opposed to introducing new cash. It's like lying in a bath and using some of that water to clean your hair. You move the water around a bit to accomplish a task, but water levels didn't actually change. The bigger worry here is that people will start spending more money without an equivalent increase in things to buy. Of course, this brings us to a second question that my regular viewers might be screaming at their TVs right now. What about the Federal Reserve? They have their own unlimited bond buying program that's funded by creating money. Well, for that, we can go back to 2012 for some reference. The Federal Reserve has decided to go for QE3, although many people might call it QE Infinity because they are making monthly purchases of mortgage bonds uh, until the unemployment rate improves substantially and the Fed itself gets to define exactly what substantially means. Back then, the Fed was engaged on an unlimited bond buying scheme. Wow, well, maybe there are some lessons we can draw from the past. 
It's true, the monetary policy base spiked during these initial rounds of quantitative easing. Let's boost our monetary supply on the graph. With the quantity of items remaining the same, why didn't prices shoot up as well? Well, because velocity plummeted. Banks and financial institutions hoarded the money in order to shore up their own balance sheets and regain profitability. And people and businesses chose to hoard their money rather than risk investment and potential loss. It got so bad that prices actually went down. When money is hoarded, it is not spent, and so producers are forced to lower prices in order to clear their inventories. As you can tell, inflation is a bit of a complicated beast. But if you're worried about it, keep an eye on spending patterns and quantity of items available, as both of those are much lower than average right now. So there you have it, a very helpful rescue package or a moderately effective stimulus package. Sorry this episode couldn't be more conclusive, but the story is ongoing. Tune in as I continue to follow how everything plays out. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you want to support news just trying to understand what the heck is going on right now, remember to subscribe. A boosted numbers would help me keep what's left of my sanity as this lockdown continues. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.